Hello there. <clears throat> Hi. Um, I wonder how many people we're going to get today. Oh, are there fun things happening today? Summer. Summer. <laughs> <laughs> Well, on the East Coast, the first full day of summer is rainy and cold. <laughs> oh, really? It's actually yeah. it's actually a stunning day in Ireland. We've had very good weather for the past two, two and a half weeks, which is exceptional. Wow. Yeah, Exciting. It's not normally like this. But yeah. I, also had the, I also was stuck in meetings till 2 a.m. last night. So. Oh, dear. Mm-hmm. Wow, that's a day. <laughs> are you getting? Are, are you uh, are you able to get away anywhere this summer? Um, no. No. <laughs> In a very, as a small company, we have somebody who's going on maternity leave, oh. <laughs> so <laughs> I will be working. <laughs> uh, is, is, can you take your work to the beach at least, or you know? Yes, I can do my work as long as I'm on U.S governance <laughs> so yes I could okay because that's that's what I did um you know I actually I used to love June because fire you know we friends had a place in Fire Island in Kismet oh lovely and it was it was like 200 a week and nobody was out there so I would just go out there for three weeks at a three or four weeks in June and uh well three weeks in June and it was great it was it was just it was beautiful and tranquil and so i'm missing that but hopefully fingers crossed next week i'll be there for the Jul oh. july 4th weekend amazing and it's like well, an extra long weekend yeah well there's there's got a there's there's an awful lot of um logistics required to be to to actually execute in order for that to happen uh -huh. um, in terms of the elder care stuff so yep well, I I am rooting for that to happen. For you. <laughs> <laughs> Me too. All right, we can give people another minute or two. I don't know, as you said, mm -hmm. how, how much we're getting here, but we'll see. And if nothing else, we can go through the white paper. Yeah. In a very productive, small working mm -hmm. session. <laughs> yes, exactly. Let me just update. I was working on the notes, feverishly messaging. Poor Ryan Jones. <laughs> I suspect I, I've got it. Yeah, I've got a feeling like uh, uh, the the um, the 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 new system of connecting to the meeting might be like I just I I was I got in through Helen's. Uh, uh, you know, I looked up Helen on the on the calendar and saw and then copied from her. Just clicked on her meeting invite because my one seems to be stuck in. Wow. Uh, H land. Um, yes, agreed. Even I had issues <laughs> getting into the Zoom today. Um, I could not agree with you more. It's a little hard to find, like, where is the calendar? Even yeah. if you just go to Hyperledger, like, the calendar of events is kind of hiding. When you oh, click calendar. Uh, I, hang on, we've got to check this. My car DM, Simon is struggling. Hold on one second. Um, sure, you want me to put it? I can put it in the Cardia chat. Uh, yes, please. And I did it on Slack. So if he's there, then he will find us. I know that's not our official tool anymore, but. Yeah, I got a feeling last night uh, knocked out a few people on the <clears throat> in mountain in on mountain drive. <laughs> oh, there we go. We've got Ken. Hello. Good morning. Good morning. How are you, sir? Doing Tired. Well. Oh no, no, that actually wasn't. Yeah, no. It'd be easier for them. Easier for yes, it was. Japan yes. meetings are easier. Hi, Simon. Welcome. Hello. How are you? 
I'm tired. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I hear. I hear there's a uh, tiredness spreading among the team. Okay. Alrighty. I think we probably have who we're going to have for today. And we have some uh, team editing we're going to do. So I will, I think I can start recording. Unless it's already recording. Hard to know. Nope. I think we might already be recording. So excellent. We can jump into today's housekeeping. Let me share my screen. Alrighty. So uh, as we have discussed, we've moved all of our um, housekeeping things over to the Hyperledger official toolkit. So here we are. Um, these are the meetings for today's meeting. Welcome June 22nd uh, Cardia meeting. We have on today's agenda to discuss the Cardia white paper and make appropriate edits and um, updating to that now that we're a, a part of the Hyperledger family and um, have been working on sort of repositioning Cardia in this space. We also need to just briefly cover the antitrust policy, which is Hyperledger's antitrust policy. We're not talking about explicit um, business opportunities here, but speaking more generally, if anybody has concerns, please let Ken or myself know. And additionally, our code of conduct is to encourage participation from all people, all participants, and that this is a safe space for ideas and um, discussion. If anybody has concerns with that, again, you can reach out to Ken or myself or through Hyperledger directly. Uh, so as I mentioned, today's agenda, we've had a series of really wonderful um, guest speakers and we hope to have more come and enlighten us about the work they're doing in this space and how it may uh, align with the work that we've started here at Cardia. Um, but today's session is really to revive that white paper that we wrote um, at this point, I don't know, a year or two ago. <laughs> it's been yeah, a while. It might feel like two years, but it was a year ago. A year. Okay. Well, it's ripe for review. And so we're going to dive into that and then outline um, our sort of coming goals as we enter the summer period and what we want to do with all of this wonderful information that we've been gathering is there anybody that would like to introduce themselves today? I think we have a small crew and mostly familiar. So if you want to say hi, please do. Otherwise, we'll, we can jump into it, I think. Okay, let me share my screen. Excellent. So I'm sharing it in Acrobat because it's going to look uh, a lot easier on the eyes. Problem with Google Docs is it automatically sizes to considerably less than the real size and then people struggle to read and then they say the font's all wrong and why are you making it so small and it's because google has rendered it at 56 percent so uh we this is not something that can be edited necessarily well it can but i wouldn't advise editing directly i will take notes um, okay. so broadly the the goal of this is to uh brand as hyperledger well we needed to brand as hyperledger um, but also to, you know, a lot has happened in the last year. Um, we've, uh, and uh, the text uh, need, needed a refresh. Additional elements needed to be put in. And so here goes. So um, one difference to the past uh, white paper is the credits have been moved to the front. Mm. Um, and we've also credited <laughs> credited you we've tried to do a bit of a better job on crediting so excellent and, and and does this include in the credits do we need to include i guess it's more history the the life cycle that we've went from Linux Foundation. To... Uh, so, uh, yes. Uh, well, Linux Foundation Public Health for its encouraging and initial support of the Cardia project, and in particular, Jim Sinclair and Jenny Wanger. Is there anything, uh, do we need to say more than that? Mm, I think that adequately covers the past. And then uh, the next paragraph covers the Hyperledger Foundation for pulling us into that. 
Excellent. Okay, moving on to page three. So this is an overview. It's not, I don't think it's, it's not significantly, I mean, there's some tweaks, but it's not significantly changed uh, to the, uh, in uh, oh, <clears throat> versus the previous overview. Again, it notes uh, the move to Hyperledger Labs. This calls it machine readable governance rules at the very last paragraph uh, is where I see that. Do we need to mm -hmm. update that? Do decentralized ecosystem governance? I mean, if you're not in this, maybe machine readable governance means something, but we've like branded it now. So I, I'm, I'm not sure I'm remembering correctly some other thing but um I, you know it, it, it is that the spec until the specification is formally i think adopted by the diff then decentralized ecosystem governance isn't is is in some kind of limbo as a term okay and i think this is I, lowercase machine readable governance Right. It's like mm -hmm. the fact that it's being done by the computer neutrally, potentially. I think that's fine. I just wanted to call it out. Yeah. We're about a week away from ratification of this of the first draft of the oh really? The first version of the machine readable governance. So I think wow. just need to take that into consideration if you want to line up with that or not. Okay. Maybe we need to, maybe we leave it in this page. And then I don't know if we talk about machine readable governance anywhere we else, do. we may want to transition and explain that, uh, that it's now under, you know, that it's yeah. under the diff we, and things like that. There's, there's a lot. So, so one of the things is a, there's um, a, the section on machine readable governance slash DGov has been updated. Okay. So we will get to that imminently. Anything else on page three that... Okay, well, that's just the um, contents, mission and background. Uh, this is the text here has been tightened up over the previous version. I think it looks okay. Can we pause for a second and just also establish the goals for reviewing this? We want to sort of shift to Hyperledger because it may be received by an audience now for the first time as a larger audience and get some excitement going. Yeah. Those are the two goals. Well, also bring it, you know, uh, uh, bring it uh, uh you know renovate uh, in light mm -hmm. of the previous year um and with fresh eyes on design and communication so new graphics etc cetera, etc cetera, which build on changes that have taken place over the years so that it's a, it's a fresh coat of paint okay. with some additional with, with an additional extension a couple of extensions Okay. Um, in the, the second to last paragraph on that side, um, it talks about uh, to adapt and function for sharing and verifying multiple kinds of health data. I mm -hmm. think put insert in there, including consent. Okay. Otherwise, people might assume that it's just clinical data. Mm. Keila, what's your thought as a medical professional? What do you think? I think that's fine. I think that makes sense. 
And I don't know if we want to add more than that because we haven't del delved into those use cases extensively yet, but I do think the consent conundrum is a well-known problem. Well, <clears throat> yeah. And I mean, I suspect when we have a worked out how to deal with consent, we will need to do a version three of this um, with an with additional sec with a section on that. But <clears throat> I suspect we don't have a huge amount to say about how that is technically soluble at this point. Okay. Well, I count. Well, you that's that that was a question more so than a statement. I think Slightly adding the better. mention is fine, but you're right that more elaboration will be needed when we fully flush out a consent use, like a consent capture and release use case. So this has been expanded a little bit. That's good to me. Yep, agreed. I'm um, sorry, I'm taking a couple of minor notes. Uh, so this is new. Um, again, it's uh, it <clears throat> it's uh, it sort of illuminates a uh, section that we had. Um, so this is an addition. And the message this is delivering. <laughs> the thing is that for uh, medical, um, most of the data will be personal data, regardless of its source. So this one is less. Um, there are there are some organizational credentials that are indicated, but the the type of data that we're dealing with generally pushes towards making the personal data really large and the, the other data really small. So axe this graphic? Well, I'm still confused about exactly what the message is that it's trying to convey. Is it saying that a verifiable data could be in any one of those little dots? Yes. A verifiable data point? Yes. And and the the left half of the of the diagram up to people, organizations, machines, sensors, connected data makes much more sense in um, for Cardia than the right half of the data. Okay, so just remove the right half of the slide. Yes, the uh, the the part at the bottom, the interoperable preserving and all that, that makes sense too. And you could just get rid of the bubbles at the top. Mm -hmm. on the right side and move the interoperable and other stuff as attributes of the data or descriptions it, of or qualities of the data. And one ledger write equals, I'm not sure. Unlimited digital identities holding their data off chain and verifiable credentials. So, so it's you going to contrast how much has to go on the ledger. In some ledger systems, all the data goes on the ledger. And in Cardia, the keys go on the ledger and all the data goes to the, to the uh, off-chain wallet. But that isn't clear. Okay. For those of us looking at the slide for this first time, <laughs> I would say I missed Fine. that memo. <laughs> Fine. Okay, that, that's a really good feedback because um, that, that helps. I think you need, we need to show the dots off the ledger if that's the point. Right. Put the, the P, put, put the, the personal PHI dots on this page. Put the, put the ledger on the on the left underneath the one ledger right, and then say all the rest of the data is off ledger. Put one dot on the going to the ledger, 
and all the rest going into the wallet is that that kind of captures what yeah exactly you're, you're trying to say that there's you do less on the ledger when we're talking about this because it's decentralized and it's held by the holder but all these dots are sitting here on the ledger i mean it's just a, the i don't get the point of the one ledger right equals all these dots yeah you don't see the one ledger right dot anywhere or the ledger anywhere and so you can't see that the other this big cloud of dots is off the ledger right it's pretty i like the idea of the slide but it didn't deliver the intended okay. message sorry <laughs> that's okay that's okay that's what we're here for so this is um again slightly changed mostly the same but more tightly edited. Oh, this is fun history. I'm learning new stuff. So you, are you telling me you didn't read the first one? <laughs> the, the, the ARPANET? First. I don't think ARPANET was in the first one. So is there any value in that second column? It's talking about email as a central identity. Is there any value in mentioning the security there as well? That like that email provider in theory has access to all of their stuff? Because it's centralized and housed by the that third party. I let others adjudicate on that. Uh, yeah, the fact that it is stored in a database by the provider makes it subject to um, uh, tax and disclosure. Disclosure. Yeah, you know, both internal and external. Right. So, it provides the access to the email provider to observe all your data and also makes a target for hackers. Okay, I'll have that. Well, you in the second paragraph already make the database an attractive target for crime, but Keila's other point is that the data is also available to yep. email providers, a unique statement. Right.
Do we define federated identity? An authenticated login to, to a user profile on one platform enables, do we need to do any more explanation of that or do we think our readers will connect those dots? Should I just say, I mean, should I say such as Google or Facebook? Yeah, Google email, using your Google email to log into a different thing, to something totally unrelated. I don't know how to phrase that better, but such, something- Such as using your Google email to log into other services. Yeah. Just so that there's no room for gaps in interpretation there. Okay, moving on. Move on. Mm -hmm. I think we, in the first column of comments, I think we need to be clear because we still have an, there's still an issuing, right? There's an issuer of the credential. Why is that different than the federated one? And I think adding a sentence or two to highlight that it's like issued and now in the ownership of the holder to then reuse in a in a disconnected way except to verify that trust i don't know that that's explicitly clear this is kind of good to do but with a after a long time <laughs> fresh set of eyes Maybe it gets into it in the second thing. I wasn't there yet. Second column. I think in the second paragraph, if we said any governing authority 
and issue a digital credential some um to the to the holder or something like that to, to yeah something like that just to the holder makes it clear that the data went to them Okay. Yeah, because it does get into it a little bit more in the second column, but I think that transfer of the handoff is isn't wasn't clear to me in that section over there. It's reiterated in that we know we can know that it was issued to the traveler in the top right paragraph. That kind of goes over it again, but I think a hint of it in the second paragraph. Sure. On the... Yep. Okay. Thanks, Trevor. Situation. Uh, W3C did come, don't go in the same parentheses. I Does it need a comma? Take the W3C out of there. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not sure why that was there. The did come is fine. I'm good with this page. Okay. I like this page. Sorry, what's the digital twins? Uh, so smart cities and robots, those are the digital twins. Digital digital twins are, are sort of a replication of uh, infrastructure in digital form. So if you have yeah. something that's uh, not very intelligent, it doesn't have any any capabilities, it's an inanimate object, you can create a digital twin to represent it in the digital world. So if you have uh, a box of goods, it can be ha have a digital identity assigned to it and mm, okay. its location or movement or even though it's not capable of itself interacting digitally. Got it. Very big in industrial uses at this, or it's a growth area in industrial uses. Right, because you track like product lines and things like that. I think ultimately you're going to have digital twins of operating rooms and you, you name it, you can have a digital twin of it. But so it's the, there's, it's a definitely a, a big thing coming.
I think we have a, we're missing a word. Sorry, I jumped ahead a little bit. After agents, because they manage information flow between parties, have a fiduciary. I think it's and have or that have. Parties and have is missing a word in the middle. They're in the agents paragraph. Yes, uh, and have. Okay, I'm moving. Unless anything else on this page? Mobile agents enable connections with mobile devices. Mediate. That should be mediator agent, shouldn't it? Uh, yes. Yeah, yeah. Got you. I'm good with it. Not a triangle anymore. Uh, oh, okay. Do we need to put the labels? We defined the participants in this. Do we need to use that language? Who's the issuer, the holder? The verifier. Those labels aren't here. Okay. They're partly there. So you have issuer agent and verifier agent. You just don't have um, uh, when you where you say at the top cloud or mobile holder agent. That would kind of I can put, I, I can re rework. Oh, I see it. I, okay, yeah. I can rework that to make that more explicit. I think it's, it's uh, if you had the holder agent in the cloud or mobile holder agent, then I think you'd have all three. Well, I was going to put holder under patient, issuer under public health authority, and then verifiers over here. Yeah, that would, that would make it. I think you can leave the agents because I think that's the helpful too, but um having that clearer would, would also be good. So this is the one that's gonna need some re-editing in a week or two. As a second, this is the two pages here on governance.
Should we change uh, in the pair wait, wait, one, two, three, fourth paragraph the benefit of machine readable governance? Instead of as the science, should we change as the requirements or regulations change just to make it a little bit more neutral? So one of them is the to indicate that as the data from the research says uh, it needs to be 24 hours versus 48 hours. That that's that part of it. The regulations are the ones that say you have to have a test or a vaccination or whatever. And so the two kind of play in tandem. So how do you express that that part of the the sciency part of it in another way? If you wanted to use another way. I, I will say scientific evidence for requirements. Yeah, that would do it too. Okay. Now the may yes, so the uh, right. So I see see a problem there. <laughs> So um, I think we have to introduce the uh, concept of decentralized e ecosystem governance more explicitly in the final paragraph to make for this to for this next to make sense. Okay. Agreed. And maybe it's just you know as this concept has become more adopted, it's been rebranded. I I still think there's some value in referencing it as machine readable governance. And so getting mm -hmm. rid of that entirely, I don't know that we need to do that. But we should probably explain it and then introduce its other name in this universe. Yeah, yeah. Number one, should that be encoded? Publishes in codes. Oh, that's, that's I see. Yeah, I see the problem there. Uh, I think just publishes. Okay. Yes, that sounds good to me. Move on. Yep. Find that second paragraph a little stumbly. Sorry, what, what was that? Which paragraph? The second one. It seems it's like a little circular. Perhaps it could be simplified. Like, is a URL or web address, maybe if that goes in parentheses? I'm not, I think it's trying to say that. It wouldn't be a comma there for a start. For something with an IP address, basically, it's going to have a unique, each one will have a unique did. No, I think it's a compare and contrast kind of thing. It's the, if a device has an IP address and a digital identity 
begins with a did. Aha. Uh -huh. Okay. Okay, I'll rework that if there's confusion. Yeah, it just needs a little wordsmithing yep. to simplify the, the, its goal. Third, the third paragraph, I think, uh, approved by the World Wide Web is actually recommended. Okay. Is their official language. Kind of a nuance, but it will make the okay. World Wide Web people happier. I think there's like four synonyms there in, in that second paragraph to your point, Keila, that you have, you could just, you know, website and web address is a little bit extra redundant, but you could just say IP address, comma, URL, comma, or web address. Because mm -hmm. all four of those are synonyms. You know, the web address is a synonym for a URL, is it not? <laughs> yeah. I think it, it's And an it's IP just... address is a type of URL, so. IP address is of, of a different layer. But if you just said IP address and a, or a URL, you could yeah. simplify mm -hmm. the complexity a little bit. Yeah, maybe also not if, because it's missing the like second part of the if that thing, then the next thing. And I missed the then the next thing part. I don't know. There's something about that paragraph. <laughs> I've moved on. Trevor's <laughs> made note. <laughs> <laughs> Have you, are we still on this page? Yeah, I guess we are. Yeah, sorry. Um, the mobile agents, instead of can or create unique, uh, third from the bottom on the right, it should say can create. They don't have to. They, they probably should, but they're not obligated to. Gotcha. Nice, nice writing though. So I borrowed this from other documents we've created. Yeah, this one's okay to me. Agreed. That last slide, I maybe this is just a nitpick, but um, like you have APIs are insecure, the third bullet point on the left side. Oh, and That's the next not one. not just a, a definite. Oh, yeah, yes. Well, sorry, I interrupted you. Say that again. I was just going to say I wouldn't I wouldn't make that claim because I think just blanket saying APIs are insecure is not accurate. In my opinion. So I don't know if you just delete that whole bullet point or maybe it's that maybe it's just a APIs can be insecure. Yeah, I agree. With Steve. So we're going with APIs can be insecure. Yes, just, yes. You, have to do, you have to do something to secure them. In their raw state, they are not secured by default. They You have to do work to make them be secure. Yeah, so maybe APIs require additional security layers, and we're saying that that's inherent in, this, in the DITCOM solution. Yes. So figuring out how to, and I think there could be a little, like maybe aligning some of the 
language across the two, like the, the bad things and the good things so that they're more directly like checked off. Set the next bullet point after that also, you might want to change it to say could, can be insecure or maybe or something. I think that one's oh, I know. Sam was pretty adamant that the the if you're, gonna, if you're gonna have an API to a mobile device, it is fairly inherently insecure. There's not a lot you can do to fix it. Okay. The the fact that servers do interesting things to secure their APIs and is kind of a well-known process to to address the security concerns, but it's hard to do that on the mobile the other way around. Sure. So if I want to talk to you, if I want to contact your mobile device, there's not a good API based way to do it securely. Okay. I don't have any comments on this one. Me neither. My big gripe on this slide is that there are two periods after parsed on the fourth point. Oh, good, nice catch. <laughs> I've I've caught a whole, I've I've seen a whole bunch of little things that I've taken notes on, but that was good. Good, I missed that. I wonder also in those heavy text slides that we did at the beginning, do we want to make any mention about like C cryptographic signatures and privacy section? Maybe, yes. <laughs> I know that's a little bit of like stringing things together throughout the document, but it may be helpful because if, if people are getting lost in the words, like this picture goes a long yeah. way. Mm hmm Yep, yep, yep. Okay. There might be a better way to lay this out so the schema is more clear. I think there is. Yeah, and maybe we get to it, but I haven't seen it yet. Um, is the schema relationship to the ecosystem? Uh, the end must be revocable is not is not true. They don't have to be revocable. Down in the fourth paragraph. Can't, first line. First line okay. of fourth paragraph. They don't have to be revoked. They okay. So I'm gonna re I'm gonna redo this slide to because that's this is not doesn't really work. This is version two of an attempt to make it work, but Move on. Yeah. So this is all this is all being redone.
or created a new Some uh, in the point one part of it, I think we need to um, emphasize that paragraph two and three are done once and not done right now. It sounds like that happens each time a patient comes through the process. Okay, yeah. I would put the second and third paragraphs as item zero and then say that this happens at the very beginning and setup and configuration. And then steps one, which is the follows its KYC process, and two, it issues the thing, and three are the normal things that happen. Do we so want to? Sorry. So these are all basically one, as opposed to one, two, three. No, I'm saying that uh, the second paragraph it writes a public did, it adds a credential schema. Those two paragraphs. Okay. Those are step zero, and they only happen one time at configuration okay. or setup. And that items, a public health authority, the issuer sends, and scanning the QR code, those three items go one, two, three every time a new patient shows up or does something. A number two, though, do we? It's very specific. They send an email. It doesn't have to be email. It also doesn't have to be sent to them individually. It can also be a generic QR code, right? <clears throat> Where they can like register. Uh, how about the issuer connects with the patient to issue the, the credential? Provi or the issuer provides a QR code for establishing the initial connection. It doesn't have to be a QR code. Fair, could be a link. <laughs> okay, I've, I've got that. Um... And then ex um, following the QR code or invitation URL, we'll create a direct link, an encrypted link. Yeah, because it's not, we're not yet at the credential part. We're at establishing a connection, I think. Yeah. I also think there's, it's very vague on the verifying the person using the app is the same one. <laughs> That's, well, there's like a lot that. there. So I'm not, I'm not sure I follow what you, what you're saying. Um, well, there may be an identity step in there where they're asking them to prove their identity. They may have, if if the implementation pipeline is that, or connection pipeline is that I human vetted you. And so I know you are, I'm only offering this link or, you know, onboarding method. That's step one, right? I vetted the person. Okay. So I'm only going to give you the credential because I've already vetted you. So mm. step three doesn't happen, or two and three don't happen unless one's. So we're saying happened. the vetting happened up front. Mm -hmm. So how does the issuer server verify the person using the app is the same one that registered as a patient? It doesn't. It already knows it is because they sent the invitation to that person. Okay, so then that goes away. And number three, second yeah. sentence. Okay. There's an assumption of based on step one that being done. Sorry, I'm I, I I'm not sure what has to happen to three. Uh, number the second sentence goes away. After connecting, the issuer server verifies that that sentence disappears. And we are at time. We've been having so much fun. I lost track of it. <laughs> <laughs> it looks well, like we, we're just about two thirds of the way through. We're yes, we are two thirds of the way through. Um, Excellent. 
so but we will need to discuss because um yeah there are some substantial things let me just quickly so can we that, pick, up, that. pick up this the next session we certainly can yeah other rather than having you just try to blitz through it yeah yeah yep, yep, no agree I trevor if you have a link for this i can put it in our notes and encourage people to go review the sec the second Third, cool. last let, me, third. Let, me, let, let me update uh let me update it before sending it out okay let me make all the changes that so the changes can be reviewed as well excellent okay. cool. all right Sounds good very good thanks everybody we'll see you in two weeks in which will be in july how exciting <laughs> <laughs> thank you have okay. a fabulous day bye Thank you. Bye.